Welcome back to another learning studio in two minutes. In today's video, we're going to cover touch events and how to connect those with functions. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. All right, so touch events are pretty self-explanatory. Whenever a part gets touched by some other object, it's going to trigger. And then you can connect that event to a function if you want to. So on the script, this is what it might look like. So up at the top here, we have a reference for the part. In the middle section, we have a function. And then down here at the bottom, we start with the part that's going to be touched. After that, we have dot touched, which is the event. And then we say colon connect to connect it to a function. So whenever this part right here gets touched by another object, it's going to run this function right here. This function right here has a parameter. You can call it whatever you want to, but the standard is other part. And other part is going to store whatever other object touches our part. So what we're doing for the function is whenever the part gets touched, we're going to print off the other part that touched it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so if we have the output open and my player walks over the part, we have some different things like right foot and left foot, and those are the other objects that are touching the part. Another way that you can do the same thing is combining the function and the event into the same line. So in this case, you would start with part just like before. You'd say dot touched colon connect. This time inside the parentheses, you're gonna start with function. You can still put your parameter inside the parentheses here, and then whatever you want your function to do will go down here. So whichever way you choose is going to work the same. It's really just a matter of preference. So a lot of times with touch events, you're going to want to check for a humanoid inside of your function. So that would look something like this here. We're going to define a variable called local humanoid. And then we're going to use the parameter other part and take a look at its parent. So if the other part is a leg from a player, then dot parent will get the player's model. And then what we're doing for this last part here is we're taking a look inside the model and making sure it has a humanoid part. If we do find the humanoid, then we can run whatever code we want to. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.